What does engineering mean? What will engineering be in the future? To understand what engineering is and where it's going, let's take a look at what it has been in the past. Even before the United States gained independence, European countries were already contributing to the fields of engineering, and these fields were quickly evolving. Each country developed its own engineering strengths. As the United States gained independence, engineers were needed to support the Industrial Revolution. Our migrant tradition gave the opportunity to shape American engineering from many elements of the European traditions. American engineers at this time were not university educated. Many classical liberal arts universities balked at allowing a trade into their elite system. Engineers were educated in their technical and civil duties through apprenticeships. Engineering meant mastering technical concepts as a craftsman, a job for the working class, although necessary for building infrastructure. It was increasingly evident that engineering identity was developing as a profession, and the first formal engineering education in the U.S. came at the turn of the century when West Point was founded as the first engineering school in 1802. Engineering training at West Point focused on military applications, but this laid the foundation for the training of civilian, or civil, engineers. The development of civil engineering came about, in part, because America recognized the need for a more extensive road system. This created a demand for engineers that the current apprenticeship model could not satisfy. In response to this, schools began to develop civil engineering and mechanical arts courses. One of these schools was founded by Amos Eaton, who in 1824 declared, I've established a school for the purpose of instructing persons in the application of science to the common purposes of life. This definition of engineering, applying science for the use of society, has remained a part of the conversation over the past two centuries. Engineering has always adapted to new technologies. An early example of this occurred as steam power began to emerge. By the mid-19th century, engineering is finally getting some recognition from the upper tier of universities. In 1854, Harvard graduated its first engineering student, but it would take another 50 years to graduate 200 more. In 1862, the U.S. government decided that more people needed mechanical training. The Morrill Act set up a structure for funding state schools across the country which would focus on engineering and agriculture. Based on this foundation created during the first half of the 19th century, the number of engineers would continue to increase over time. Engineers of the early 1900s changed to meet the needs of their time. Engineering had transformed into three distinct types of professional engineers. Management engineers, stressing the importance of engineering leadership, working class corporate employees, and theory-driven researchers coming closer to scientists in their work. In 1918, the Mann Report, written by Charles R. Mann, was one of the earliest critiques of engineering education in America and is still an important document in studying the demands of undergraduate engineers. For a number of years, Mann observed, practicing engineers have felt that the instruction in colleges of engineering was not organized to meet the demands of the profession. In popular culture, engineering was lauded, with engineers as protagonists in novels and movies, creating massive public work projects through the Tennessee Valley Authority, and exhibiting inventions at World's Fairs across the United States. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, which launched the space race. The engineer began to play an important role in American identity, evidenced by the formation of NACA, the predecessor to NASA. This movement, of course, ended with the United States' victorious landing on the moon in 1969. Boeing published a list of desired attributes of an engineer in 1994. Only one small aspect of that was the fundamental knowledge learned in most colleges. Engineers were expected to have a good understanding of ethics, flexibility, curiosity, and abilities in teamwork and communication. A red accreditation followed this trend by instituting EC2000, a new outcomes-based criteria which included contemporary issues and a global understanding of engineering. The engineers of tomorrow are in the K-12 classrooms of today, and we'll be starting to tap into that talent from an even earlier age with engineering standards as part of the next generation science standards, due to be adopted in 2013. In the minds of many Americans, the Cold War continues, except now China is perceived as the communist menace we must face. Now we're not fighting for space dominance, but technological and economic superiority. This brief history only describes what happened to engineering in the US. We're not even talking about China, where eight out of nine top government officials are engineers. India, who had 750,000 engineering graduates in 2011 alone. France, where engineers are so prestigious that they lead the Bastille Day Parade, 
or Malaysia, where equal numbers of men and women graduate with engineering degrees. So, what have engineers done for us? If you're watching this, you probably use many of the National Academy of Engineers' 20 greatest achievements of the 20th century every day. Who are the engineers of the future? Is it the asocial middle-aged white man working in a cubicle? No. They're diverse teams of men and women of all races from around the globe. Anyone can be an engineer. In fact, some say that to be human is to be an engineer. So what can engineering mean? Engineers can solve wicked problems, the complex social problems of today. They can also work to provide social good in local communities. What will they do? The National Academy of Engineers have chosen 14 grand challenges for engineers to tackle in the coming years. Will you be one of the engineers working to solve these and other complex, wicked problems of tomorrow? So the big question is, what will engineering be for you?